What's up guys? Glad to see you again. Probably glad this ain't another rabbit video or something about solar. I had a lot of questions lately on uh, YouTube about how I set my guns up and stuff and I'm no expert. I'm just learning this stuff but uh, I will share with you what I've the way I do things so far. Uh, if you purchase a pre-charged pneumatic uh, the cheapest one to get into, I guess, would be the Discoveries here. We have them in a 177 and a 22 caliber. The first thing I do when I take them out of the box is inspect them, take some tools, go through all the fasteners, make sure everything is as it should be, check the gauge to make sure it's uh, got air in it. If uh, you take it out of the box and the air gauge is on zero, I don't know, but I've bought uh, two of these and both of them have had a thousand PSI in them when I received them. So if if I bought a third one and I opened up the box and it and the gauge was on zero, I would I would be concerned that I had a leak. Now once you go through and inspect everything, it's looks like uh, it's got air in it. All the fasteners seem tight, everything, all the mechanisms seem, seem to work well. Uh, next step I do is, before I fire anything through it, is I clean it. You would be amazed at the crud that comes out of the barrels of these things straight out of the box. Clean it up real good, do a couple test fires. Then uh, my first step with uh, any of them is go out and beg or borrow or buy a, just a cheap chronograph. I bought this one uh, on Amazon for like 80 bucks. I'd seen people using them on uh, air gun videos on YouTube for a long time and didn't think much about it. Now after after toying with this hobby for a little while I see this tool is invaluable. So how do you use it? Well. Well, what we're going to do is go out. I know already from having these guns which pellet they prefer. Starting off, I would use a pellet that I think is going to do well. And uh, take it, your chronograph, charge the gun all the way up. And just start firing over the chrono, taking notes. Write down your shot string all the way You'll, you'll see a giant drop off in the feet per second once this thing starts getting low of air. And that gives you the information you need to figure out what your uh, air ranges are, your usable air ranges. So uh, why don't we go outside, set the crony up, and uh, we'll shoot a string with both the 177 and the 22. And then we'll put that information up and see what we've learned from it. Let's head outside. Boy, glad that's over with. It was getting hot out there. Well, let's see what we can uh, get from the data that we've collected. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, 22 caliber in the Disco. Uh, that's shooting uh, H&N field target trophy powers, 14.66 grain. Uh, when you first get a gun, if you want to do this test, I'd grab just cheap off whatever pellets are available there. I wouldn't uh, worry too much about using expensive pellets. Uh, the data, the numbers will change, but the shot strings, the efficiency of the rifle, you'll still see the same trend. Okay, I'm going to scoot over here, and I'm going to try to put this up here where you can read it, so if you're not watching in full screen, you may want to turn that on. So, uh, we shot a total of 55 rounds through the 22 caliber version of this gun, and... Uh, as you can see, shot one started out at 668. Shot number 55 was at 599 feet per second. Now, as we look through the, through the numbers up here, 
the numbers start really getting consistent around shot 11, which was at 1800 PSI. Now on these PSIs, I'm just kind of guessing because I'm just looking at a gauge and there's, it's a real small gauge and not everything's precisely marked. Uh, but anyway, if the best performance seemed to be from shot 11 to shot 48. Shot 11 at 1800 PSI was 711 feet per second. Shot 48 was 716 feet per second at give or take 900 PSI. So that's going to give you uh, 37 good shots, good consistent shots. Uh, if you go by the numbers here, uh, if you'll notice shot number one and at 2000 PSI was nearly nearly the same as shot 51 at 750 PSI. The reason being the hammer inside the chamber that's striking the valve with all the air pressure in there, it's not quite getting it fully open until the pressure drops around 1800 PSI. If I was going hunting from shot 11 to to shot uh, 48, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. Uh, so there's no need in pumping it up over 1800 PSI, which that's good news because I hate pumping these things up. And uh, normally I was running like from 1800 to 1200, but after doing this test today, I see that I can go down to about 900 PSI without having much issue. Now if I was going for real long range, super accurate shots, you know like some of the uh, long range shots we do from time to time on the videos, uh, as you can see uh, shot uh, 28 was at uh, 763 feet per second, shot 41 in the string was 763. That gives you 13 shots. Those are your gravy. That's the butter zone for this for this gun if you're wanting to go real long range. So you're talking from 1500 PSI through 1000 PSI, you're, you're gold. Now let's uh, move on over and look at uh, the shot string from the 177 caliber. Uh, this one was shooting uh, Beeman FTS's field target specials, uh, 8.64 grain. Okay, uh, we shot this one down from 2000 all the way down to 700 PSI. At 2000 PSI, shot one was 821 feet per second. Shot 51 was 817 feet per second. Now, as you can see by looking at the charts here, uh, the most usable range, range that I'm seeing here is from shot 17 at 849 feet per second to shot 47 at 849 feet per second. That gives us a range from 1800 PSI down to about 1000 PSI. That gives us a 800 PSI spread. So if I'm going to go long range, the butter zone for, for this rifle with this ammunition is uh, from 1600 to about 1200 PSI. It's going to be your most consistent. Uh, shot 24 was 873 feet per second. Shot 43 was 875 feet per second. And there was less than uh, basically about 10 feet per second deviation in that. But I was just totally shocked that I shot this rifle down to 700 PSI and it was still producing 705 feet per second. Even though it started sounding, sounding weak, before it would get down to about 12, 1300 PSI and I'd pump it up because the gun was sounding different and I was assuming that, it, that the velocity had really dropped off and I was pumping way more than necessary to air the gun back up because uh, you got 30 real good shots 
37 uh, real good shots for, uh, or I should say, more consistent shots. But anyway, if you want to try try this, get you a chrono, air your gun all the way up, shoot it all the way, even if you've got a spring gun. Uh, the chrono is going to give you more of an idea of what weight of pellet to use to get the speed you want, because a lot of these brake barrels are shooting 12, 1300 feet per second which is way too fast for a 177 caliber pellet and it tumbles. So the only way to reduce the speed in those is to, to shoot heavier lead. In the next video, we're going to come up with a shot card for our rifles and see how where we zero affects the range on these air rifles. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you later.